Welcome back to my road to completion guide for Neo 2. This is episode 33. It's finally time to take on the final main mission of the game in the eye of the beholder. Join up with both NPCs and follow me to flip the switch. You all set? Let's go. Dispel the dark realm around the corner, then die on purpose to go back to the shrine. Spell the next dark realm and die again for a quick trip back to this shrine.
There's a chest on the way to the final dark realm. You should get a trophy called Let There Be Light for dispelling all the dark realms. If you don't, check each mission's detail page to find the one you're missing. Remember, submissions that contain dark realms don't count toward the trophy. Continue down the path and pray at the shrine to restock ninja weapons. You can set up a safety save before fighting the final boss if you're nervous about losing shinobi boxes. This boss will keep shifting forms, so his attack patterns will constantly change. If you stay on the outside of the arena, you can block most of the attacks. And since our ninja weapons don't require a key, we'll maintain the advantage.
Make sure to grab all the items when the fight is over, especially the green divine weapons. If you killed all the yokai that I've specified in the guide up to this point, you'll also get the yokai quelling master trophy. If you didn't get the trophy, Check your titles menu under the following categories, small yokai defeated and large yokai defeated. I'll leave a list below of all the yokai in the order they appear within these two menus and the mission you can find them in. Any yokai you've missed will show up as four question marks and they'll be sandwiched between yokai you've already killed. This will help you easily identify the ones you're missing so you can replay missions to get those kills. Equip the Rotten Rope Cutter and lock all the other Divine Weapons into your inventory. You won't see me lock the Divine Weapons in because I ended up farming for more. Cross over into region 4 and use 7 whetstones to max out familiarity with the rotten rope cutter. If you don't have 7 whetstones, just use what you have. Just fighting with the weapon is enough to finish maxing out the familiarity. Okay, if you still need to farm for T utensils, switch your primary guardian spirit to Isanagami and attune the following soul cores Kodama, Diadara, and Lady Osakabi. If you already have the T Connoisseur trophy, skip ahead to 1930. Appraise your T utensils to see if you're lucky enough to get the trophy now. 
If you do get the trophy, skip ahead to 1930. Now connect to the internet. Depending on when you watch this series, the servers for this game may be down. If so, don't worry about it. All we're doing is connecting to the internet so we can join a different clan that helps us farm T utensils faster. If the servers are down, you can still farm for T utensils, but it'll just be without the increased drop rate that comes from the clan. Press R3 to connect to the servers and select transfer from the menu. Now choose the Furuta clan for an additional 5% T utensil drop rate. When you're done, disconnect from the internet. Use your prestige points to upgrade bonuses. Now check your Ungio title list for two categories, Tea Ceremony Novice and Reputable Tea Ceremony Master. These two categories will give you an idea of how many tea utensils you've collected so far. Remember the goal is to appraise 50 to get the trophy. You should also have a few reincarnation books which allow you to reallocate your stats. Feel free to adjust your stats accordingly based on your playstyle and what suits you the best for the next farming spot. Now let's replay a submission called the Refined Man of the Underworld. We can use this mission to farm for more tea utensils and weapon sentience. Sentience is represented by the bar underneath your Kasaragama on the right of the screen. As we hit enemies, this bar will fill up and eventually the weapon will speak to us once we max out the gauge. In order to get the trophy called a weapon's mind, we have to get our weapon to speak to us five times. If you find this mission too difficult, just farm a different mission. If you're also farming for tea utensils, remember to get them appraised from time to time or else they won't count toward the trophy. Thank <laughs> you. 
If you collect too many items during the farming process, go to the blacksmith and disassemble everything. The goal at this point is to farm five burst counters with each yokai form, feral, phantom, and brute. You can farm any enemy within any mission for this trophy. I just chose to do it here. We need anima to perform a burst counter and we can use the lantern plant fruit for a quick boost. I typically use two at a time. Simply wait for an enemy to perform a burst move, which is signified by a red attack. Press R2 plus circle at the same time to perform a burst count. Each yokai form has a specific timing window that you have to master to get the burst counter. You have the option to practice this back at the beginning of the guide. If you still need to practice, just go to the dojo and train. I will demonstrate the timing window for all three yokai forms. We'll start with the phantom form for now. It's a very precise last second counter. When you complete five burst counters, use the divine branch fragment to leave the mission. Now let's change our primary guardian spirit to a brute form. Brute has a very large timing window. Basically, if the enemy is glowing red, you'll easily get the burst count. Now let's go with Nekomata as our primary guardian spirit since it has the feral form and attune the following soul cores, Kodama and Lady Osakabe. The feral burst counter is fairly precise, but you also have to line up correctly with the enemy since you'll lunge forward. After you have the trophy, switch back to Hakutaku, and I'll see you in the next one. Be good.